testing. If we could all begin to take our seats, please. The ceremony will begin in 10 minutes. And if you are missing a cord for a child, trial ad cord, your cord is to my left.
Hello everyone, we will be starting in about five minutes just to make sure everyone has time to come in.
Good afternoon, everyone. I know we're excited to be here. <laughs> my name is Mila Lofton, and I am the Public Relations Manager here at UIC Law, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to UIC Law's commencement ceremony. Today's music is provided by the Tower Brass Ensemble under the direction of Charles Shuckett.
Graduation marks a very special milestone in a future lawyer's career. This commencement brings together members of the University of Illinois Chicago family, students, college administration, faculty and staff, relatives, alumni, and friends. I want to congratulate today's graduates, and I want to thank everyone for joining us today and for supporting our loved ones through their law school journey. Before we begin today's ceremony, and to assure everyone enjoys this meaningful event, at this moment we ask that you please turn off or mute any electronic devices that may distract from the ceremony. Thank you. At this time, I present to you the administration of the University of Illinois Chicago and the School of Law. I now present to you the members of our distinguished faculty. I would now like to ask everyone to rise, if you are able, for the national anthem led by Professor Maureen Straub Kordesh.
In the spirit of building a better future and healing, I would like to take a few moments to acknowledge that, the U that UIC resides on the traditional territories of the three fire peoples, Ojibwe, Odawa, and Bodawadmi. This area was also a site of trade, gathering, and healing for more than a dozen other native tribes. What's more, the state of Illinois is currently home to more than 75,000 tribal members, and the Chicagoland area is currently home to one of the largest and most diverse urban native communities in the U.S. We recognize that indigenous peoples are the traditional stewards of the land we now occupy, living here long before Chicago was a city and still thriving here today. As we work together today on these territories and in the year ahead, we must remember our responsibility, especially as a land grant and Asian American and Native American Pacific Islander serving institution, Hispanic serving institution, and minority serving institution to find ways to right the historic wrongs of colonization, state violence, and to build bridges with and support indigenous communities' struggles for self-determination and sovereignty. It is now my pleasure to welcome the Dean of the UIC School of Law, Nicola Booth. Thank you, Mila. On behalf of the University of Illinois Board of Trustees, law faculty, administration, and staff who join us in person, those joining us online, and those whose tireless dedication to our institution precludes their attendance, it is my pleasure to welcome you to your commencement event. <laughs> to our graduates and their families, congratulations on this extraordinary accomplishment. I would like to begin by introducing the members of our distinguished platform party. Executive Vice President Nick Jones, Interim Chancellor Javier Reyes, UIC Student Trustee Mohamed Hawk, Graduate College Representative Jamie Haney, your Class of 2023 Valedictorian Jacqueline Fredberry, Miss Cynthia Sprague, your Student Bar Association President, Tolu Oduwengbo. <laughs> Professor Arthur, Arthur Acevedo. <laughs> Professor Yelena Duterte. <laughs> Professor Sonia Green. <laughs> Professor Stephen Schwinn. <laughs> Professor Maureen Kordesh and distinguished alum Howard Ankin. I'm also delighted to welcome our commencement speaker, Appellate Court Justice Jesse Reyes. <laughs> Justice Reyes, we look forward to recognizing your accomplishments and hearing from you in a few moments. It is now my honor to introduce Chancellor Javier Reyes. Javier Reyes serves as interim chancellor of the University of Illinois Chicago, leading Chicago's largest and only R1 public research university indicating the highest level of research activity. Dr. Reyes has been committed to expanding on UIC's inclusive campus culture, pioneering spirit, while realizing the university's vision to transform lives by eliminating disparities in economic opportunities, health, and education. Prior to his appointment as interim chancellor, Dr. Reyes became provost and vice chancellor for academic affairs at UIC in August 2021. In this role, Dr. Reyes served as UIC's Chief Academic Officer 
to advise on matters of academic policy, strategic direction, enrollment management, and academic resource planning. Most recently, we are happy, but we are sad. Dr. Reyes was appointed chancellor of the University of Massachusetts Amherst, where he will take his strong commitment to the principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion in support of a brighter future for everyone across the university community and ultimately society. Dr. Reyes received his bachelor's degree in economics from the Instituto Tecnologico y de Estudios Superiores de Monterrey and his doctorate in economics from Texas A&M University. Please join me in welcoming Chancellor Reyes. Thank you, Dean Booth. Thank you, everyone. It's an honor to be here with you today. Uh, I have to say that there's some Jolly Ranchers over here that I'm going to have to make sure I take one of those. Uh, it's the first time that I see them on the podium. So, but no, I just want to say how honored I am to be here to, with all of you today. Uh, this will be my last commencement ceremony uh, as chancellor for, for the university. So it makes it a very special. It makes it a very special because uh, I'm a son of lawyers, grandson of lawyers, cousin of lawyers, uncle of lawyers. All of them live in Mexico. And then I was sent into the US sort of as an exile. Well, joke's on them, because I'm giving all of you the degrees of lawyers. So uh, I have to say that it, it is an honor to be here. And I want to be one of the first ones to congratulate our graduates. Uh, this is an incredible, an incredible day for you, your families, and all your support circle. And believe it or not, to your classmates as well, about you, how they feel. I mean, we just saw you all cheer valedictorian as well as, 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 as the, the, the student for the for the bar, the, the Student Bar Association, and you can clearly feel the love that exists among, and the collegiality that exists among all of you students. It is quite special to see it, and it makes me very proud to see it, because I know that you will be friends forever. Now, there's a reason why. You earn your degrees and all the benefits and opportunities that come with your successful completion of your studies, because you have worked hard, you have fulfilled the commitment you made, when you began this journey, and you reach, out, you reach this day having faced many challenges, more than many generations before you. Uh, as we all know, uh, when it comes to the pandemic, it changed the world for everyone. It changed the world for everyone. Many of you were just starting your degree when it was happening, and it, was, it turned the world upside down. It made it stop, but you didn't. You fulfill your degree, you fulfill the requirements, you continue to work hard, and to make sure that you, you concluded your degree in time. And I have to say that that is something that you should be very, very proud of, because no others, perhaps maybe two, three years ahead and one, two years behind you, will do it. But you will be part of a very, very unique generation that went through something that will change the world. And it has, and you will change it with them. So, <laughs> now it is important to recognize that no one does this alone. And I think when you think of it, as my dad tells me, law school is really hard, and I have seen it with all of you. It is really hard. So there may, there were many times in which you were trying to finish an essay, you were trying to finish an exam, you were getting ready for a presentation, and you just felt that you couldn't do it anymore. I bet I felt that many times, there's still to this day that you feel it. But I bet that you turn right or you turn left or backwards or you pick up your phone and you had someone there that could push you along. Either a classmate, so look right, look left, and tell those classmates, classmates thank you for being there. And also, Remind them that you're there for them. You were there during your degree. You will be there throughout your careers. Don't forget that. But I'm also going to ask you graduates to recognize that even though you were in school and you were working on your own, there was a huge, huge supporting cast behind you, which literally right now it's behind you. And they were there all the time, spouses, partners, siblings, uncles, grandmothers, grandfathers, friends, that they were there to support you. And I'm going to ask you, graduates, to stand up, turn around, and give them a round of applause.
Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's what I'm talking about. There's so much energy today's day that I wish you could, which you could bottle it with you and you could, you could take it with you. Uh, but, but you can, so make sure you make a lot of memories. You blink twice, and that's when you make a memory. So, so please, please do that uh, along the ceremony. I also want to mention that on that March 2020, the, thing were, the, the world changed also for another set of individuals that doubled down on their commitment to you, the students, to ensure that you were going to make it to this day on time, meeting all the requirements, meeting all the standards, having the academic excellence that you so deserve. And that was our faculty. They had to turn really to a completely different way of making sure that they could teach you. They could give you the same experiences, if you can say so, give you the same knowledge, and make sure that you were ready for this moment. So if you could help me thank the faculty for what they have done for all of you. I also want to remind that there were a lot of people in this university that kept us going, in frontline workers, academic advisors, that are not necessarily students of the faculty, but that lie in between them, and kept us going. So I, I want to make sure that we don't forget them, because they, they, they really play a big role in uh, providing your experiences and in your education. But I do want to give you, uh, leave you with a couple of thoughts. Uh, I know that. There's some people in the audience that have seen the other ceremonies, as they told me. Uh, and I am a big Star Wars fan. And it happened to be that it was May the 4th and two days ago. Yes, it was May the 5th, so the Revenge of the Sith. And now, I'm, I, I still am going to use my same Star Wars quote, uh, quote for sure. Because I do live by that quote. A lot of you may think that Yoda is a fictional character. I have my doubts. <laughs> but I'll tell you that he said something that was very profound to me, and it's do or do not, there is no try. And I think that is an important thing to do, to think about, ponder on it a second, and then just think about it every morning when you wake up. Just tell that to yourself. I'm going to go do. I'm not going to go try. I'm going to go do. Because, especially in your cases as lawyers, as I know from my family, how much you represent for others. Your work, your commitment is going to change the lives of so many. You don't get to just try. You have to go do. And when you feel that you cannot, call that friend, call the parents, and make sure that they get ready to go, to, to, they, get, they get you ready to go do. You don't get to try. And to me, that is something that we at UIC have um, instilled in you. We are a social justice-focused university. We go where disparities are, and we close them. Whether it's an access to education, whether it's an access to healthcare, whether it's an access to good uh, legal services, whether it's an access to economic development, that's what UIC does. We're a social justice-focused university. We go where the disparities exist, and we do everything we can to close them. And I want you to take that with you. I want you to take that with you because I know that that is something that UIC has instilled in me for the past two years that I've been here. And just like I will go to Amherst and continue to represent the responsibility that I have with me is to continue to represent honorably this university. I'm asking all of you to do the same thing. When you're out there, when you are in, your, in the middle of your career, you still represent UIC. You're part of our family. You need to continue to shine bright for all of us. You need to make sure that you take that responsibility seriously and then come back and see us. Come back and help faculty give students like you, a years from now, the experiences that the faculty were able to give you with the alumni. Come and share your knowledge. Come and share your experience. Come and share your guidance. Come and share your mentorship with others so that you can continue to help UIC shine. Once again, I am deeply proud of all of you. I speak on behalf of our faculty when I say that. It is not just me, it is the whole UIC community. You have our best wishes and confidence that you will go far. 
And one last piece of advice, always keep your personality visible. Don't ever hide it. Make sure it shows, like it shows in my closing remarks. Some say you may go to infinity and beyond. Some say you will go to a galaxy far, far away. Some say you will go where no man or person has gone before. Some say you will go into the multiverse. Wherever you go, I know you will shine as flames shine. You will shine bright, and I know that you will be lighting the way for those that come after you and those that you serve. Congratulations, class of 2023. Thank you, Chancellor Reyes, for those very inspiring remarks. At this time, it's my distinct pleasure to welcome our commencement speaker, the Honorable Jesse G. Reyes, Illinois, uh, Justice for the Illinois First District, Third Division Appellate Court. Justice Reyes is the first Latino to be elected to the Illinois Appellate Court, and he is an alum of UIC and of your outstanding law school, class of 1982. Please join me in welcoming Justice Reyes. Executive uh, Vice President Jones, Chancellor Reyes, no relation. Um, graduate College Representative Mr. Haney, UIC Law, Dean Booth, distinguished guests, class of 2023. Uh, this is a momentous occasion, but I also want to acknowledge uh, uh, someone here who it's an experience uh, as well, and that's Dean Booth. This is her first commencement exercise for UIC Law. So let's give her a big hand. I am honored and humbled to be here with all of you. It is my understanding that this year's class selected and voted uh, for me to be the commencement speaker. And I thank you for that esteemed privilege, particularly since it gives me the opportunity to address future lawyers for my alma mater, which provided me the opportunity to become a lawyer. And because of the excellent education and training I received, anytime the school calls, I am always ready to be of service. Now, I must confess, I, my graduation, I don't remember who our commencement speaker was or what was said. Um, maybe it's because I was nursing a headache at the time, but. Well, what I do remember is waiting to receive my diploma and wanting to get started studying for the bar exam. So I promise I will make every effort to be brief and not keep you long. On that day, many, many, many years ago, I do recall sitting there marveling at how someone like myself ever got to be where I was at. For I was a product of a blue collar neighborhood blue-collar immigrant family. I was the first in my family to ever even go to high school. And under these circumstances, higher education was not a foregone conclusion. It was anything but that. But I always had a dream, which was one day to become a lawyer and to be the best lawyer possible, wanting to make a difference, but not necessarily being the difference. The reason I'm sharing this with all of you today is because the path to this podium, podium of honor and distinction was far from being a straight climb. It was anything but easy. But what got me through my endeavors in the legal profession were three simple principles. So I want to share them with you today as you commence your careers in the law. Hopefully, they will serve you as well as they served me. The three simple principles are called the three R's. They are respect, reputation, and remember. Respect. First and foremost, have respect for yourself. I know there are some of you in this class of 2023 who feel as if you don't belong. Don't worry, believe me, there are many people in the legal profession who feel the same way, as if they don't belong. So you're not alone. 
Aside from how you may feel, you do belong. Every single one of you have earned this moment. Every single one of you has earned the right to receive a diploma. Every single one of you has earned the right to be on the road to becoming an attorney. However, I should caution you, there will be those who will try to define you. There will be those who will try to place you in a box. And there will be those who will try to place limits on what you can accomplish. Don't ever let anyone define you. Don't ever let anyone try to place you in a box. And don't ever let anyone try to place limits on what you can accomplish. Be the difference you want to see. On this point, I speak from experience. Throughout my career, there have been many individuals who have tried to define me. In law school, one of my mentors that I had a lot of respect for told me that I would not be a trial lawyer, even though he knew that that's what my goal was when I was going through law school. According to my mentor, I didn't fit the image what jurors would like to see. But I saw myself as a trial lawyer. And after law school, I went on to have a successful career as a litigator, trying very complex civil cases in both state and federal court. And every time that the jury returned a favorable verdict for my client, and there were many, I would mail a copy to my mentor. <laughs> who finally sent me a note admitting that he was wrong and I was right. When the opportunity to run countywide for the circuit court, for circuit court judge presented itself, there were many well-intended individuals who advised me not to do so. The concern was that up to that point in time, no one with a Latin-sounding name had ever won a countywide race for judge. Contrary to the advice, I ran and I was successful. As Dean Booth mentioned, I was the first Latino elected to the appellate court in Cook County and currently the only Latino elected to the appellate court in the entire state of Illinois. <laughs> but prior to my run, there were many well-meaning individuals advising me not to run, as no one of Latin descent had ever won a race for a higher judicial office in the state of Illinois. I ran and I was successful, and I have been serving on the Illinois Appellate Court for over 10 years, and my colleagues recently selected me to serve as the court's chief executive officer. So in terms of respect, start respecting yourself, believing in yourself, your skills, and your abilities. Don't let others put you in a corner. Be the difference you want to see. As to respect for others, regardless of whether they have a title in front of their name, please respect everyone. Treat everyone as you would like to be treated. In showing respect to the court, lawyers should always be courteous to the judge's staff, being mindful that they are an extension of the court. Keep in mind, you know lawyers talk about judges, but judges and their staff talk about the lawyers. Have respect for your opponents. In doing so, please consider the words of William Shakespeare in The Taming of the Shrew. Quote, and do it as the Ceres do in law. Strive mightily, but eat and drink as friends. End of quote. There will be some who will say that this is an antiquated way of thinking. After all, what does William Shakespeare know? He wasn't a lawyer. And there will be some who will say that this sentiment is not applicable in today's world of litigation. But I'm here to tell you that it can be done. Some of the opponents that I faced in courtrooms trying cases are now some of my best friends. We fought and we gave our clients 110%. We even drove some of the judges crazy because we wouldn't want to compromise. But at the end of the day, 
We left the courtroom as friends because we knew we were engaged in a profession which required us to act as professionals and in an adversarial capacity. We demonstrated and communicated respect by treating each other with civility and personal courtesy. Through our conduct and our words, we were always cordial, courteous, and civil to one another. Without respect, there can be no civility. Without civility, there can be no respect for lawyers or the legal profession. Remember, we are not a business. We are a noble profession. One of the best opportunities for lawyers to either shine or tarnish their image in the legal profession is their choice of language and their use of tone. Lawyers should refrain from using words which will most likely elicit an emotional response or reaction from their opposing counsel. In showing restraint, the lawyer has definitely taken the high road and not the bait. In the words of Justice Anthony Kennedy, civility is the mark of an accomplished and superb professional. The practice of law breeds competition, conflict, and challenges. Engage it. That's what you're there for. But do so with calm and cool demeanor. Be the difference, not the example. Respect for the law. Remember, we are the gatekeepers. We are the guardians. We are the gladiators of justice. We are the ones who speak for those who can't speak for themselves. We are the ones called upon to stand up against injustice when others will not. Keep in mind, even if you disagree with the individual wearing the robe, you must always respect the robe for what it stands for. When you receive a decision that you do not agree with, accept it professionally, and find a way to right the wrong. The second R is reputation. Reputation is how lawyers are known in the legal community. Before entering a courtroom, a conference room, or a mediation room, your reputation as a lawyer will precede you. What type of reputation it will be is within with your control. We determine our reputation as it will be in, within the community. The pressures of the practice of law can be overwhelming, but lawyers must find the means to complete their time-sensitive work. If you lack punctuality, that is how you will be known. If you lack diligence, that is how you will be known. If you fail to be your word, that is also the way you'll be known within the legal community. The third and the last R is remember. Remember what it took for you to get where you are. Remember where you came from. And remember to always give back to others who are striving to be where you are today. Along those lines, in the early 2000s, I, along with a small group of lawyers and judges, viewing a lack of diversity in the legal profession, decided to establish an organization to promote diversity in the legal profession. We called it the Diversity Scholarship Foundation. We set out to accomplish this goal by providing scholarships to needy and deserving law students. In fact, I think there's some in this class of 2023 that received uh, scholarships from the Diversity Scholarship Foundation. Over the years, the foundation has provided financial assistance to hundreds of students throughout the Midwest. Some of the lawyers who were former recipients have now returned to give back through their time, through their financial contributions, and through their mentorship. Little did I realize that when I was receiving my diploma years ago, that I would be in a position to be the difference in our legal community. As I look out today into the audience, I am encouraged by what I see, because this class has overcome challenges that no previous class in the history of this law school has ever faced. But even under those trying circumstances and during those trying times, you have thrived as law students. You were the difference in law school, and you will be the difference in our legal profession. In the days ahead, there will be moments of uncertainty when you will wonder what to do. So I'd like to leave you with 
One of my favorite quotes from Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes, Jr. Greatness is not where we stand, but what in what direction we are moving. We must sail sometimes with the wind and sometimes against it. But sail we must and not drift and not lay at anchor. Class of 2023, congratulations, and I know you will be the difference in our legal profession. Congratulations. Thank you, Justice Reyes. Uh, at this time, UIC School of Law recognizes those graduating with the distinction of summa cum laude, magna cum laude, or cum laude, so represented by their cords that they're wearing. Will all the graduates of the class of 2023 who are so designated please rise so that we may, by our applause, recognize your outstanding <laughs> academic achievements. Congratulations. Please be seated. At this time, it is my pleasure to invite Ms. Cynthia Sprague to the podium to present this year's Lucy Sprague Public Service Award. The Sprague family established this award to honor the memory of Lucy Sprague, who attended the law school from 1995 to 1996. The Sprague Award is given to one or more graduating students who have demonstrated a significant commitment to public service work. This award was created through the efforts of Lucy's father and mother, the late Honorable George, and present with us today, Mrs. Lee Sprague, her sister Cynthia, and her brother Alexander. Mrs. Sprague, Lee Sprague is here with us today in the audience. Can you wave for us, Mrs. Sprague, back there? So please join me now in welcoming Cynthia to the podium. No, I don't look my age, but I still need peepers. <laughs> Good afternoon, honored guests, faculty, family, friends, and the graduates of the class of 2023. Today is a day of beginnings and endings. You step away from theory and practice and the role of formal student and into the realm of application and real world discernment exalt in this moment of transition and achievement, especially considering you all survived COVID, that is so impressive. <laughs> Yours is an exhilarating and weighty obligation comprised of equal parts, ambition, responsibility, choices, and dedication. Much has been given to you in your tenure as a law student, therefore, much is expected as you begin your practice of law in its many iterations. As I look out on all of you today, I see the future and I have hope again. All of you now possess the power, and listen carefully, to change the world. What? Yes. You should cheer, because you all are going to change the world. I know it. What are you going to do with that power, though? Will you use your power to improve your communities? Will you use your power to protect the most vulnerable and continue to tear down the structures of inequality, injustice, prejudice, and extremism? Or will you use your power to end the exploitation of the many by the few? The world is out of balance. According to Richard Daft, the author of The Leadership Experience, there are five power bases. Coercive, reward, position, charismatic, and knowledge. Of all of them, the most powerful is knowledge. Use your power bases wisely. Use your knowledge, your charisma, and most importantly, your heart to eradicate the imbalances in your community and in your world. And please, oh wow, thank you. <laughs> please remember, power is not about money, position, or control. True 
power is about creating a better world for everyone. This year marks, well, yay. <laughs> this year marks the 26th year we've awarded the Lucy Sprague Public Service Scholarship. God, I feel old. My family created this scholarship to honor my sister Lucy, who was killed during her second year at John Marshall. Unlike most people who see the law as a lucrative way to make a living, amass power, and begin a promising political career, my sister saw it as a way to give a voice to those who did not have one and to protect those who could not protect themselves. It was her intent to utilize her incredible intellect and her love of the law to create a better world and community. Today, I have over 25 people who carry on my sister's work and are actively creating both a better community and a better world. Every single recipient of the Lucy Sprague Scholarship has gone on to distinguish themselves both in their continuing commitment to public service and in their practice of law. As the 2023 recipient, Jacqueline Spreadbury now joins this August and select company of lawyers. This year, as with every other, there were many outstanding and deserving, deserving candidates. As always, choosing one person from among so many incredibly powerful and compelling people was extremely difficult. From the first sentence of her essay, Jacqueline spoke to my heart and my deep frustration with the inequities of the world. She is a fierce, she is passionate, she's committed, and she is powerful. She is rightful, yes, she is, and we all should cheer for this. She is rightly furious with a system of laws that allow the marginalized, the poor, and the many to be exploited and abused by the callous, selfish, greedy few. Jacqueline lives and breathes her convictions every day. From sitting in at the University of Chicago to protect an appalling, to protest an appalling lack of trauma care for her community, to her many internships with social justice organizations, she is the embodiment of everything my sister was and would have been. She has accepted a job with the Law Center for Better Housing here in Chicago, and I have no doubt she will be a formidable, dynamic advocate for her clients. Jacqueline is, a, is an example for all of us, and I am honored to welcome her as the 2023 Lucy Sprague Public Service recipient. You, Jacqueline, will do great things, and God, this world is lucky to have you. I just want to say thank you so much to the Sprague family. I'm honored to receive this, and I, I really hope to continue to live and, and uh, the way Lucy uh, implement, um, reflected in all of her commitment to public interest. So thank you so much. Wonderful. Congratulations again, Jacqueline. And thank you, Cynthia, for those wonderful, powerful words you shared with our graduates. I would now like to invite our outgoing Student Bar Association President, Tolo Oduengo, to the podium to introduce the Lex and Philogus Fichier Award. And I'm going to deviate from the script to just say that as my first year as dean, I could not have asked for a better student leader in Tolu. She was a wonderful partner. <laughs> Highly respected by her peers and well-deserving of all the leadership accolades she's gotten. So Tolu, thank you. Thank you, Dean Booth, and good afternoon, everyone. I've had the privilege of serving as the Student Bar Association president this past academic year. I would like to give a huge thank you to my other SBA board members for working so hard into the class of 2023 for your support and allowing me to serve you as your Student Bar Association president. It is so nice to see so many beautiful faces in this auditorium today and all of my classmates as well. The Lex Anchila Justicier Award was developed by students to recognize the professor whose work in and out of the classroom truly embodies the mission of the law school. Lex Anchila Justicier 
is a phrase our graduates are all familiar with. Translated from Latin, it means law is the servant of justice. That is the principle at the core of our education here at UIC Law. By way of ballot, the graduating class votes for the professor who they feel best embodies this mission. The four faculty members receiving the highest number of votes are selected to present the hoods to the graduates during the ceremony. Of those four, the faculty member with the most votes is recognized as the recipient of the Lux Award. It is my privilege on behalf of the graduating class to recognize and congratulate Professors Arthur Acevedo, Elena Duterte, Sonia Green, and Steven Schwinn. I would now like to introduce the winner of this prestigious award. Please join me in a round of applause for Professor Acevedo. That was nervous, nerve-wracking. Um, <laughs> thank you, Tolu. Thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. And thank you to the students uh, for this award. I recognize that you have many wonderful faculty to choose from, so for me to receive this award, it's truly an honor and a privilege. What makes this graduation ceremony especially rewarding is when I reflect and think about your path to becoming a lawyer. You began law school not in a classroom, but behind a screen in the midst of a global pandemic. But that didn't stop you. Your, your determination and your persistence saw you through the uncertain and precarious times that we were all experiencing. You were patient and tolerant as many of us struggled with frozen computer screens, connectivity issues, and the now popular and annoying, you're on mute. Right? I want to share this thought with you. Every time I walk into the classroom or turn on the Zoom camera, I carry both a nervous energy and a sense of excitement with me. Why? First, because I recognize that I am about to address a room full of highly intelligent, critical thinkers. Second, because of the uncertainty of the class discussion that's about to take place. And finally, because I know I always leave class wishing we could continue the discussion. To me, the privilege of addressing a room full of bright students on their path to becoming future lawyers is both daunting and exciting. Why? Because unlike addressing a room full of experienced lawyers, I have the opportunity to address a room full of talented individuals with a beginner's mind, a mind that has not yet been jaded by doctrine, by theory, or by practice a mind that is open and eager to learn about the legal concepts we are studying, and a mind that is not afraid to ask questions that challenges my understanding of the concepts because I may not have previously thought of your question. It is an opportunity and one of life's great privileges to help guide another's thinking about the legal concepts we are studying. And I give this responsibility my best efforts, thus I challenge myself to constantly work on my preparation and to identify the deliverable for that class session. And I do this because I remind myself that I will either experience the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. And I choose discipline every time. To be certain, law school is difficult and demanding. It requires great sacrifice from you and from your loved ones. Over the years, I have talked with many of you, laughed with some of you, and cried with a few of you. Thank you for allowing me to be a small part of the path as you pursue law in your career. So here you are, ready to embark on the practice of law. But first, I ask you to think back to the day you began law school, the excitement you felt, the uncertainty you feared. Think back to the battles you fought to get to this moment. Nothing stood in your way not the countless law school exams, not the papers you were frantically writing and rewriting, not even the virus that shuttered entire nations um, 
was going to stop you from pursuing your life dream of becoming a lawyer. Despite all the adversity you faced, both the foreseeable and unforeseeable, you accomplished your life's goal. Allow me to take you back to your law school days where, many, where you met many memorable litigants. Some of you met Jeffrey Stambovsky from the case of Stambovsky v. Ackley, who contracted to purchase a home that he later learned was haunted. Right? <laughs> when Stambovsky learned of the haunted story, he filed a lawsuit seeking to rescind the contract of the sale. The court found as a matter of law that the house was haunted. Can you imagine representing a client who alleges that a house is haunted? Right? I can. Some of you met Lodewick Post from the property law case of Pearson v. Post. Post, <laughs> I guess that one resonated. Post filed a lawsuit against Pearson claiming that because he, Post, had already begun pursuing the fox, the property of the fox's pelting carcass were rightfully his and not Pearson's. Can you imagine yourself handling a case that will profoundly impact the direction of property law? I can't. And some of you met Brian Daly from the case of Garrett v. Daly. Brian, a boy, a boy of five years and nine months, moved a lawn chair on which Ruth Garrett was about to sit in. When Ruth attempted to sit, she fell, sustained serious injuries. Ruth Garrett brought a lawsuit against Brian Daly for battery. Can you imagine yourself handling a case against a sympathetic defendant a five-year-old in this case, right? I can't. Right? Why? Because the law, because I know that each one of you possess a desire to, to pursue justice and fairness. We hear much criticism about the law and lawyers. Lawyers are accused of being aggressive, critical, argumentative. Yes, we have been trained to be aggressive when we advocate for our clients. Yes, we have been trained to critically examine the law. And yes, we have been trained to construct arguments to advocate for our client's position. But we lawyers are trained to use tools that many others may not recognize, the tools of language, evidence, and authority. We use language to clarify a point or to create ambiguity. We use evidence to persuade the opposing side of our client's version uh, of the facts. And we use authority to ensure that the legal rules and the legal process we follow are followed. We use these tools because we have been trained to use them to create advantage for our clients. And I know each one of you will soon be using them as you begin your career. To illustrate these points, I would like to share with you one of my favorite cases. <clears throat> Several years ago, a dispute arose between a shopping center landlord and its tenant. The landlord and the tenant signed a lease giving the tenant exclusivity in the sandwich business within the shopping center. So imagine something like, like this, a shopping center. Exclusivity is coveted, is a coveted feature in many commercial relationships because it can result in generous financial benefits. In this case, the landlord promised the tenant the exclusive right to sell sandwiches on the premises and no other tenant can sell a sandwich for the duration of the lease. So this is our area and no, no one else can sell. A new tenant, who operates Cadobo Mexican restaurants signed a lease in the same shopping center. They sell tacos among other Mexican food. So the issue in this case became whether a taco is a sandwich. Right? Right? <laughs> we have been trained to examine similarities such as lettuce, meat, and cheese fillings. Right? <laughs> and we have been trained to examine distinctions such as two slices of bread or one flat tortilla. The point is, whether you represent the landlord or you represent the tenant, you now possess the skills to research the law, construct the arguments, and present your case. Before I close, I wish to express my gratitude at the privilege and honor of receiving this award. I, I hope you know by now that every day when I walked into the classroom or turned on the Zoom camera, I was excited. I remind myself that I have the privilege of working with the brightest minds in the legal profession and an opportunity to shape the legal thinking of our future lawyers. I remind myself that I am working with future lawyers, judges, corporate officers, and political leaders. But most of all, 
I remind myself that I was working with people who share a passion for justice and an interest in the law uh, and changing our society in the coming years. So go out, seek your path, and remember that your future is filled with countless possibilities. And as you build your career, remember to enjoy yourself. Don't be so busy making a living that you don't find time to make a life. And when the time is right for you, reach back and help those who you feel can benefit from your assistance. Helping others will feed your soul in ways that you cannot begin to imagine, and it will make society a better place for us all. As lawyers, we are all instruments of social change. I look forward to being called your colleague and your friend. I wish you a life filled with health and happiness. Thank you, and congratulations on finishing law school. Thank you, Tolu and Professor Acevedo. And congratulations to all our faculty hooders, right? Let's give everybody a hand. Okay, we now come to the conferral of the degrees. <laughs> Candidates, please rise and remain standing. Chancellor Reyes, will you come to the podium to confer the degrees? Chancellor, upon the recommendation of the faculty and the vote of the Senate, I have the honor to present the candidates for Juris Doctor and Masters of Law. <laughs> upon these recommendations and by the authority of the Board of Trustees, I confer upon each of you the degrees of which you have been presented and admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities of those degrees. Our heartfelt congratulations to the members of the May 2023 graduating class. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> and graduates, I know you finished your final assignments on campus for your professors, but I have one last assignment for you right now. Please move your tassel from right to the left to signify your new status. Congratulations. Please be seated. At this time, I invite Mr. Howard Ankin, a member of the law school class of 1993 and president of the Law School Alumni Council, to the podium. Thirty years ago, I participated in a commencement just like this, so being here today touches me deeply. I thank you. As an alumnus and president of the Law School's Alumni Association, I'm honored to be here today at this important moment. For most of your lives, you've been students, but today I've heard the Dean on several occasions address you as graduates. Let me be the first to address you as alumni. It's my distinct pleasure and privilege to welcome you to the UIC Law School alumni community. We are more than 20,000 strong worldwide and more than 11,000 alumni here in the Chicagoland area. As members of the entire UIC alumni family, you now are in a network of more than 319,000 alumni. One in every 13 people with a college degree in the Chicagoland area holds a degree from UIC Law. Wow. Your decision to attend law school, particularly this law school, was an impressive choice. You have put in long hours, studied, discussed, debated, competed, and written more than you may ever have thought possible. You came to law school with aspirations, goals, and dreams. Today, you leave equipped to pursue those goals and so much more. You have chosen a distinguished career, and let me share with you briefly what sets this career apart from all others. It is an honor to hold a degree from this law school, and it is an honor 
to take the professional oath. And with this, honor does come responsibility. You have a responsibility to the legal profession to act in an ethical manner and at all times. Hold yourself and others to the highest standards. You have a responsibility to your clients to do what is best for them and in their best interest, and to stand with them and to fight for them. You have a responsibility to society. Pro bono work is a privilege, and it is central to our democratic process that all citizens have access to our courts and to the legal system. You owe it to our nation, to our state, to our city, and to all others to take care of our society who are in need of your services. You have a responsibility to UIC law, your alma mater. Please stay engaged, stay connected, engage with the alumni office, the alumni association, the UIC um, alumni council, and to sign up for UIC Connected and network with your fellow alumni. Let us mentor and help you find a job and carve out your specific career path. And know that in a few years, we will ask you to do the same for another recent graduate. Be proud of your law school. Support it. Share your life milestones with us. Tell us when you land a job. Make a difference. And as everybody has said before you here on the stage, change the world. In addition to today's graduates, I know that we have alumni here on stage and seated with family and friends. At this time, can I ask all alumni gathered here today to please stand up. <laughs> Fellow alumni, class of 2023, I look forward to seeing you all at alumni events and reunions in the years ahead. My, my, very, my very sincere congratulations to you all. Thank you so much, Attorney Ankin, for those wonderful remarks. Uh, this afternoon, our valedic valedictory address will be given by Ms. Jacqueline Michelle Spreadberry, who you've seen before, but she is also our valedictorian. As a student, <laughs> as a student, Ms. Spreadberry decided to concentrate in critical race and gender studies. She also participated in externships with Planned Parenthood and the Chicago Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights. If that was not impressive enough. She has also been the Vice President for Midwest Books to Prisoners, a nonprofit organization for the last 11 years. I am thoroughly pleased to introduce your valedictorian, Jacqueline Spreadberry. Good afternoon, and thank you. I'd like to thank everyone here today that have helped all of us accomplish so much. To all of the parents, family, friends, and loved ones that have supported each of us through the past stressful few years, thank you. I'd also like to personally thank Dean McMurtry Chubb for being a great professor, mentor, and social justice warrior. <laughs> this school would not be what it is without Dean McMurtry Chubb, and I know I will be a better lawyer and a better human because of all she has taught me. Finally, thank you to the wonderful UIC law professors, Professor Pleasant, Professor, the whole, entire Writing Resource Center staff, and Dean Pope. You are truly what makes this school so special. You have encouraged us to, to think critically, have pushed us to be our best selves, and have urged us not to quit, even when it seemed like it was the only option. Today, I would like to challenge us to think critically about a few things. First, normalizing mental wellness. Second, abolishing class rank. <laughs> and third, changing the role of the legal system. First, we need to end the stigma on mental health disorders, and that starts by acknowledging that so many of us have struggled with mental health issues. 
Law school is brutal. And sometimes quitting seems like the only option because of the toll it takes on our mental well-being. UIC Law provides some access to mental health services, but this is not the norm in the legal profession, nor is it the norm in the communities that we will serve. In 2012, then Mayor, Chicago, then Mayor of Chicago, Rahm Emanuel, closed the public mental health clinics here. And they're still closed to this day, leaving so many of our community without access to vital mental health care. We must reopen the Chicago public mental health clinics and ensure access to mental care for everyone. <laughs> Second, we need to abolish class rank. Legal education is changing and class rank reinforces a hierarchy where competition destroys collaboration. Instead of seeing each other as fellow colleagues, we start to see each other as competitors and resentments build because of decimal differences in GPA. And class rank stifles talented students from thriving. Students are completely disregarded from opportunities like law review, mock trial, uh, mock trial board, moot court, and scholarships if they are not in the, one -third, the top one third of their class. Despite their amazing, talent, their amazing talents, abilities, and fantastic qualifications. By assigning class rank, the legal education perpetuates a culture where depression, anxiety, and negative self-perceptions flourish. We have to change the standard and abolish class rank. And finally, we need to think about the role of the legal system, the inequalities it upholds, and what role we will play in this profession. Soon, we will be licensed to advocate for the legal right of others. But it comes at a time where so many of us have lost the legal right to our own bodies. Bodily autonomy was just stripped away by six people in robes, completely unaccountable to us, the people. And their reasoning was 159 years ago when women were property, we didn't have the right then. So today in 2023, we can't have the right to bodily autonomy. The Supreme Court looks to a time where only white men were considered human and uses that to determine who has rights today in 2023. Originalism is racism and sexism dressed up as judicial theory, but it has <laughs> but it has real consequences. It has real consequences for everyday people. People with uteruses are facing life-threatening situations because abortion is now criminalized. Youth are being denied access to health care, which has devastating consequences on their hopes and dreams. People everywhere are forced to give birth in a country that has one of the highest maternal mortality rates no guaranteed parental leave, no universal health care, no universal child care, and abysmal support for families in need. How can we call ourselves the land of the free if half of this country cannot control their own body? In conclusion, I hope each of you will use your law degree for good in service to protect the most vulnerable in our communities and work to expand access to legal representation and rights for all people. Those in power choose to have a legal system that upholds property rights over human rights, enforces systemic inequalities, and further marginalizes people, especially communities of color. But that is a choice, and we can change that. We can advocate for a legal system that values all of its citizens, shields people from exploitation, and protects basic human rights. I hope each of you will work to build a society where people are guaranteed the right to food, clean water, clean air, education, and housing, instead of protecting the hoarding of wealth and resources by the ultra-rich. <laughs> to quote a true hero, Ella Baker, 
We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you, Jacqueline. Now you see why she's our valedictorian and the winner of the Sprague Award. Well said. All right, graduates, families, this is the moment you've been waiting for. <laughs> As the names of the candidates for the degrees of Juris, Doctor, and Master of Laws are announced, I will present the diplomas tell you about the academic hood. The academic hood worn as a part of the formal academic regalia signifies the degree the recipient holds as well as the degree granting institution. The master's hood is three and a half feet long and the doctor's hood is four feet long. At the University of Illinois Chicago, the lining of the hood is flame and indigo. For doctoral students and for master's students, the velvet trim, the purple velvet trim at the edge of the hood denotes the law. The hooding of the graduate represents the milestone celebrated today. Celebrated by, uh, selected, excuse me, by the graduating class, this year's Lex Award winner, Professor Arthur Acevedo, and the runners up for the Lex Award, Professors Yelena Duterte, Sonia Green, and Stephen Schwinn, will hood today's graduates. I would like to ask that Professor Acevedo and Professor Duterte take their places to the, at the platform to the left. Toluwani Ayomikin Odweyungbo. Jacqueline Michelle Spreadbury. Toluwani Ayomikin Odweyungbo. Alexis Elizabeth Mufari. Ivory Liahan Anik. Vera Jowry. Amira Salem. Terrell M. Farrell II. <laughs> Melissa J. Bodich. <laughs> James G. Garner. Edwin Alder Alvarez. <laughs> Gabriella Michelle Francini. Jocelyn Davis. Vianney I. Cabrales. Elizabeth Serrano. Heidi Jeanette Hernandez Benuelos. (laughs) 
Lydia D. Rodriguez. Agada Garcia. Olivia Francis Casconi. Emily V. Kotner. Spencer C. Idesmo. Megan Helbling Alberg. Jacqueline Beal. Carissa L. Frazier. Dennis A. Pomorski. Haley M. Bracken. Mario O. Ruffalo. Frank A. DeLeo. Kyle J. Karpinski. Sarah J. Tully. Michael Gallagher Lustig. Maria G. Roman Garcia. Diana Meza. Kevin C. Phelan. Kelly Eileen Goff. Shayla R. Sullivan. Rachel Catherine Sternick. Aaron R. Monroe.
William Nondor. Elizabeth Briggs Clark. Daniel Michael Track. Tori M. Whitman. Sarah Ann Harmon. Claudia A. Susinska. Megan Kathleen Golden. Isabella A. Mazanti. Riley Rain Gilbert. Kaylee M. Hartman. Ramia R. Rajan. Devin James Piper. Catherine Ann Kistner. Andrew Stephen Becker. Austin Joseph Egan. Alex Joel Krasny. Michael Patrick Hermes. Grace M. McMillan. Rebecca A. Ruzicki. Whitney Dawn Webb. Shannon M. Orowick.
Carol Fergoli. Nicole Marie Vanek. Morgan Clutho. Kylie Eileen Ostling. Adriana Marie Bosco. Andrea L. Caro. Matthew E. Sink. Megan Mahoney. Alyssa N. Baranek. Danielle M. Polito. Bonnie Lynn Perino. Helen Lee. Rebecca Salome Trinidad Balmaceda. Grace M. O'Malley. Agna Ribicoskaita. Caitlin Georgia Channon. Oliver L. Kassenbrock. Bradley A. McDonald. Marissa M. Finley. Joseph J. Alberts. Trenton T. Metzner. Jake Anderson Leahy. Jacob Brzezinski. Alexa N. Buchler.
Kayla E. Duvall. Victoria Christine Jablonski. Maximilian T. Hughes Zayner. Patricia D. Hatsopoulos. Mackenzie A. Prince. Rain C. Odom. Spencer P. White. Laura Kelly Thayer. Kelly Y. Baker. Jeremy D. Wagoner. Tamisha Quinilla Martin. Syed M. Raza. Joe McGinn. Matthew Edward Lodwick. Emily T. Art. Jung Ah Kim. Katarina C. Dowis. Corinne M. Hannigan. Jacob T. Palowski. Sammy Elias Borges. Jasmine L. Coleman. Jack Kent Kunkel. Elizabeth Marie Drynan. Emmanuel F. Bayard.
Joseph James Scary. Corey S. Rosenberg. Anthony C. Abate. Kyle Thomas Watts. Peyton B. Dizona. Owen W. Gomez. Madeline Rose Alessio. Aziza Michelle Cunningham. At this point, I invite Professors Green and Schwinn to take over for the remainder of hoodie. Anthony J. Wingfield. Lovnit K. Sedu. Anna E. Nars. Adriana Rahana. Joel Marizel Juarez. Cesar Munoz. Julia Lawant Nelson. William Edward Schuster. Christian Montgomery Brown. Carl A. Lang. Karen C. Campbell. Julia A. St. George. Gabriella Marie Manjalic. Lauren R. Patch.
Cali Capodice. Samantha T. Jones. Chu Yao Wang. Noah J. Cook. Shauna Michelle Robertson. Celestine E. Moody. Tina M. Yazzie Bittler. Josefina Ocon. Rachel R. Grasky. Jacqueline Ann Soa. Brian R. Hallett. Ashbrook Alexandra Saltzman. Irene Rizzolatti. Carolina Diaz Santian. Savannah G. McWhorter. Mieser A. Amud. Richard Flores. Nura Esther Zaki. Madeline D. Roach. Melissa A. Van Ordstrand. John L. Bolas. Joanna Mackris. Shannon I. Leonard.
Janine L. Jennig. Brendan Lewis Herdebees. Travis Justin Richmond. Daniel P. Tardy. Ryan Lazara. Antonio J. Madrigal, Jr. Sean Howard. Roosevelt Dwayne Grover. D. Nicole Johnson. Marusa Heathery. Jonathan Charles Ballou. Clara Martinez. Kiara Pather. Mihaela Christescu. Fabiola Alvarez. Kelsey R. Eldred. Michael E. Tomzak. Wyatt Graydon Anderson. Kevin Sandberg. Frank B. Malik. Amanda M. Vesely. Nolan M. Lestaco. James V. Montesano.
Michael Joseph Lucas. Georgia Jurijic. Sarona Yu. Savannah Halcombe. Lucas Edward Shulchinski. Sophia M. Bergfeld. Michelle Maria Cavanaugh. Jennifer Boo. Adam J. Victorian. Snae S. Shaw. Benjamin G. Stearns. Alexis O. Caxton Idowu. Peter James Jan. Theodore R. Facer. Ashley Chisholm Shannon. Kariana Zari Moore. Christopher H. Rakestraw. Ragu Raman Kumarasan. Margaret R. Kirsch. Shannon Daly Baker. Camelia K. Roby. Katya Irene Gramajo. Momol Khan.
Dania Rashid. Charisma Ali. Fatima Al Farouk. Jane McKnight. Anaya R. Lewis. Barbara D. Young. Sophia C. Calzavera. Monique Adriana Torres. Stephen M. Restivo. Marcos Jose Corona. Dominic P. Tirada. Anthony C. Scala. Matthew Joseph Gavush. Victoria G. Bain. Clayton Abner Smith. Igli Valkani. Courtney Nicole Ray. Zachary T. Sikora. Wilfred Daniel Quinn. Mark C. Curran. Michael D. Juarez. Christian A. Santos.
Alexander X. Lambert. Nicholas John Atkinson. Joseph Jason Alguzzi. Daniel Richard Egan. Denise Mendoza. Wow, I think all those graduates deserve a round of applause. <laughs> Congratulations, graduates. Congratulations. I would like to take a moment to recognize the most amazing, outstanding law faculty in the country, our faculty from the College of Law. They have educated and prepared you to practice law. Uh, I would also like to thank the UIC staff members whose efforts today made everything, this wonderful celebration, possible. Our staff members contribute in so many important ways to the function of our enormous and complex institution, and we owe them our gratitude for their excellence. Can all faculty and staff who are in the building please stand, if you can. Thank you. So I'm about to conclude, but just to let you know a couple logistics, following the end of the ceremony, we ask that the audience and graduates remain seated until the platform guests, uh, party, and faculty have recessed. And also, please just exercise caution when leaving the forum and parking areas. Uh, special thank you, graduates, to all your family and friends, yes, who joined us on this memorable day. They deserve a round of applause also. And as we conclude, I would like to again congratulate this amazing class of 2023, the graduates of the UIC College of Law. You all are amazing. You're going to go on and pass the bar easily peasily and come do fabulous things, and we're here to support you. Congratulations. Let's give them one more round of applause. Thank you, everyone. The School of Law commencement ceremony is now adjourned. Chancellor Reyes, will you please lead our recessional? <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. 